Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Crucial 2, a mod pack made by Vasky and crew. So, what is this mod pack about? That's what we're going to be finding out. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to make things rhyme. Seriously, uh, I don't have time. So let, let's get this going. Uh, I, <laughs> the, the pack itself, I will explain as we get it going. All right, for purposes of this playthrough, I'm using the seed Valen. No, I'm not being, you know, vain in this case. I just ended up going through a whole bunch of different uh, seeds to find something that I thought would be a little bit nicer, and this is what I came up with. So, there we go. Well, here we are, the world of Crucial 2. And this is more of a vanilla plus plus mod pack. As you notice, there are your vanilla stuff, but there's some other things over here that definitely are not uh, vanilla. It's more designed with the those that are vanilla players that are interested in modded and don't know where to begin. This kind of gives you a bit of a, a, a gateway into it. it. It doesn't like teach you everything, but it definitely has little hidden things that you end up finding or discovering as you uh, play through. Now, where am I going to base? Probably the other side of this hill or something like that, but I figured this is a good spot to get ourselves a bit of materials. So as per usual, what am I going to do? I'm going to get myself a little bit of wood just to get myself some tools. And then once I've got that set up, uh, I will probably end up reviewing the little instruction book that it comes with. But before we even do that, look, I've made myself a crafting table. And hey, because it's in my inventory, I have portable crafting available to me. I don't even need to place it down in the world. How amazing is that? I'm absolutely already in love with it. Oh, would you look at that? We have ourselves a little bit of Hadzuki sprouts. Yeah, these are definitely not vanilla stuff. But hey, they may end up growing into something big and strong later on. So let's actually... I was going to say, uh, you know, I'll make myself like stone tools and stuff, but let's actually start reading a little bit about this because the uh, the day is going to press on and yeah, it's going to be dark very soon. So I might as well get this, get this going. The Guide for Crucial 2. Here you'll find everything you need to know about the mod pack. It has an introduction, a little bit of some like uh, goals for you, and then it has an index so that you can just kind of search for things and try and find stuff quickly. But let's go with the introduction. The Welcome to Crucial 2. This book will teach you the various things you need to know to play the mod pack. The information contained in the book is designed specifically to be short and sweet, so as to not keep you here for too long, so please do pay attention. Crucial 2 is a vanilla-styled mod pack designed to give you the best Minecraft gameplay possible while adding boatloads of new content for all types of players. Please take a little bit of time to read the entries here in the welcome category. They're not too long, and they'll get you up to speed with everything you need to know. Discovering Content Basic introductions out of the way, let's talk about how you can discover what content Crucial 2 has to offer. You might have already noticed the big panel of items on the right of your screen when you open your inventory. If you're not, if, if you're a modding veteran, this is nothing new, but for you newbies, we call it JEI, or just enough items. And yes, that, that's implying this over here. And if you look on the left there, whatever I'm hovering over is showing a, a zoomed in view. That's the item zoom mod and one of my favorite mods just for a little quality of life there. doesn't really change any gameplay, just gives you kind of a, a, a closer view image of it so you can see what it looks like. Anyway, let's go back in here. And here you can see every relevant item in the game and it talks about how you, if you press R you can see the recipe for something. If you press U, you can see the use for it, and so on. And this more or less covers a lot of it. You also have categories you can look for, like uh, flowers, if you look up here. But, you know, white lotus flower scented candle, that shows up. You can look up uh, building blocks. There you go. And you get, like, uh, categories and whatnot that will likely fall into that. And it even discusses that on the next page, like building blocks, decorative blocks, variant, and so on. You can even look up crops, uh, which I thought was kind of nice. So these are the things that you can plant. Then it even has things like uh, food items, and then you can see which items are just plain old edible. Just a crop is probably better to eat in most cases because if you look up food items, uh, you probably also notice that you got things like spider eyes and rotten flesh in here. Yes, you can eat them, but do you really want to? Anyway. Let's move on. <laughs> it has lots of information about how you can uh, use some of the shortcuts and stuff, but I'm not going to go over those. We're going to go with exploring content. 
If having access to every item at your fingertips in JEI isn't your thing and you prefer exploring and discovering as you go, you can turn it off by pressing Control O. So Control O, poof, and it's gone. Just like vanilla Minecraft, you can keep a cleaner screen if you want. If it bugs you, you know, scrolling over here doesn't do anything. Now Control O also brings it back up again. And one other thing, if you want to actually remember something for later, why am I going into the never, nether I can't ever remember, press A and it will... And it will give you like a little uh, list over here when you're not hovering over it. When you're hovering over stuff, it doesn't show that list. But when you are not, like I'm going to go off of this orange terracotta to the left. And you now see all the things that I pressed A while I was hovering that mouse over is now on the list. Get rid of these. Just press A over any of those items. They go away. And that way you can have like a, a to-do list of things that you're looking for perhaps. But let's continue on. Recipe changes. Now this is actually a really big thing. Um, yeah, look at this. Eyes of Ender no longer is getting into the end going to be a quick uh, first 30 minute thing. You probably have to do a bit more <laughs> effort in order to do this because one of these Eyes of Ender requires prismarine crystals, blaze powder, ender pearl, emeralds, and honeycomb. So you'll have to have interactions like, or you'll likely have to have interactions with bees, the nether, uh, endermen. Uh, probably villagers or extreme hills, and then uh, something to do with oceans uh, is a most likely idea, but not necessarily. There is some world gen that might lead you to that. Speaking of leading, leads now require rope, and rope is made in a really specific manner. Let me actually show you this. The recipe for rope requires yak hair. Three, to be precise, gives you three rope. Yak hair... You can get from yak hair blocks, but that, that's just because you can make stacking. But otherwise, if you see here, information shows up, click on here. Get this by shearing yaks, which spawn in mountains. So therefore, it's already a questing item. If you want to get leads, you're going to have to actually quest into the mountains to probably tame, uh, at least that's what I would assume, or if you're not living there already, some yaks, and then you can uh, use those. Which, by the way, the yaks in this pack, they, they look very much like woolly Scottish cows. Uh, or coos, as they're often called. Uh, then we've got uh, paintings. There are now sticks and canvas. Scaffolding is now bamboo and canvas. And if you look up canvas on that, recipe is a bunch of straw from Farmer's Delight, which is made on a cutting board with some kind of like different items like this can be used in here. can also be gotten by breaking grass or wheat with any knife. So you have to have made a knife and then just start breaking grass and you can start making that. Of course, it is starting to get a bit late. Um, but thankfully, I did get some wool from the three sheep that you saw me uh, mercil mercilessly slaughter earlier. There we go. I just accidentally clicked on the wrong field. Let's drag these over, put these here, make myself a quick bed, and we can make it daytime. Lickety split. There we go. No harm, no foul. And now as I'm right next to spawn, I'm not really concerned about uh, losing that progress there. So we're going to continue on with the book. Going back, we've got vanilla tweaks. Instead of nerfs, we've got some things that have changed. Now this is more in regards to the mod Quark that Vasky has created. Does a lot of these changes. Big stone clusters. Underground you'll find like andesite veins uh, in huge areas um, as well as potentially not just andesite uh, stones like andesite. So you, you'll also find diorite and uh, you know, granite and all that stuff will likely be in large veins and depending upon the biome. Campfire boosts. So when you're flying with an elytra over a campfire, like you swoosh down, uh, you'll get a boost from it. Uh, but you have to have a hay bale underneath it to do that altitude boost. Soul campfires have the reverse effect and will actually shroom, draw you down into the fire or close to it uh, because it'll pull you instead of push you. Now, stairs, you can right-click carpet or snow on any type of stairs. will attach a carpet to them. Chain features, they can now be used to link together boats and minecarts. Uh, also, when moved by pistons, they can also connect multiple blocks together. Compass everywhere. This means that when you go into the nether, it will actually uh, tell you where your portal is. That, that's really nice. This, and it also works the same way for the end. Uh, customizable bed, you can, you can click on it with uh, a banner and actually have a little banner icon on the bed sheets your customizable elytra. You can also use banners with it as well as dye it like you would leather armor. Dirt to path. Now this is actually really cool. Um, if I take, let's see, I think I've got enough wood here. Yeah, I've, I've been chopping a lot of wood. So let's get some sticks. Uh, if I make a hoe and I also want a shovel, I can show this off uh, best. So 
I don't have a shovel as of yet, but just by right clicking, you know, you get a path. If you till it with a wooden hoe, it then creates shallow dirt, which can be waterlogged, and then it creates like this little puddle effect. It's actually really cool, and it's great for keeping like, uh, you know, moistened crops or something nearby. And then you also have something a little bit more uh, realistic for your, your crop rows. You could even just have a whole bunch of these where, you know, you've got like a line of it and then you just waterlog all of those then you can have like lines of crops with lines of like uh just this little little tiny tributary of water running along so I, I i like it a lot and then of course if you just dig it back up you know with a shovel or whatever you just get a regular dirt block back that you can you know put back down and it creates just regular dirt so it, it there's nothing really lost there it's just kind of like this really nice uh idea i thought that was a, a nice touch actually Dispenser block placing. They can now place any block. They're uh, placed with the correct orientation as well. Uh, hoe harvesting. Hoes can now be used to break a 3x3 three three area of vegetation. Diamond and netherite hoes can go with 5x5. Five five. Additionally, you can right-click a crop to harvest and replant it using a hoe harvest the respective area. So if you look here, give you an example. You see we've got one, two, three uh, grass here just by breaking the one in the middle it breaks all those surrounding it so you can clear uh, large areas of grass rather quickly get yourself a whole bunch of seeds and you don't have to worry about you know uh, using water buckets all the time trying to do this you can just click in some areas of course diamond ones they now have a better purpose for clearing a bigger area even faster and ladders can now be dropped down by right clicking a place ladder with another one so if I click here with a ladder, and then I, I click on it again with another ladder, it, it will, you know, start creating a ladder going down, which is pretty darn nice. Uh, <laughs> you can also slide down quickly by looking down. So when you're on a ladder and you just look down, you'll start going down the ladder very fast. And of course, you just press sneak if you want to stop, just like you normally would. Now, moving on. Piston buffs, they can now move twice as many blocks, up to 24. And they also get the ability to move complex blocks known as tile entities like chests and furnaces and stuff. Um, if you need to an immovable block, sturdy stone is uh, probably something that you would like to use in that case, just so that it has something to stop it if you want. Pot all the things. Flower pots can now hold a ton more flowers and crops, vanilla or otherwise, which I totally approve of this. This is great. You can also hang them from the ceiling or from chains, which is also really nice shields can be enchanted with all sorts of stuff villagers can follow you like a uh, like a sheep would if you're feeding it uh, with uh, emerald blocks they will follow you now so that should help them uh, make things easier for you to actually uh, convince them to come along without you having to trap them in a boat wall lanterns you could you place a lantern uh, usually you can only place it uh, underneath something or on top of something you can now place it on the side of something it'll have this little uh, stand that, that protrudes from it window logging this is just like water logging but with little window panes so if i have a stair here it will actually uh, have like the corner of the window placed outside of it so there will be effectively two blocks in that location it's pretty darn cool um, matrix enchanting. Now this is something I've covered in a previous Quark video. Um, uh, oddities. I recommend you look this up uh, and you, lo you look into it there. But basically it's like a Tetris map where each Tetris piece represents an enchanting option you can put on your sword or whatever tool or weapon you've got. There are requires requirements for enchanting levels, but if you can make them all fit into this UI, then that's how many you can actually enchant your weapon or tool or whatever with. Now, that's kind of the basics of it. It's really summarized and not the best, but it, you get the kind of kind of idea. And then, of course, there's candle influencers, which uh, up to four candles of one type can be used to make specific enchantments show up more often by having them nearby. It's a really darn uh, cool idea. I, I like that. So you can uh, in, influence whatever enchants you're looking for instead of constantly rerolling all the time. But it's also not just a I straight up get it. It's a you're going to be able to have a better chance of getting it. And then, of course, raids have changed. Now, this one's a big one. Uh, instead of, you know, before where you would have to, you'd kill the, the a bunch of these guys bearing this, this here, the pillagers, and if you killed the leader, you'd instantly get the bad omen. In order to summon a raid now, you must now get an ominous banner. So that banner that he drops, uh, you then place that down and burn it with flint and steel, as you see here. And then uh, they also have some more pillager variety to keep you on your toes. So to give an example, 
here's a new guy that you might end up seeing in one of those raids. Yeah, yeah interesting. Then Wild Towers. Now this is actually a bit more modded uh, style in my mind, but I really like how it was done. Yes, this is Vasky's current uh, skin, avatar skin, which is really nice. But this is a tower, and you can see how big these things are. They go down really, or they go up really high into the sky. There's a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out how to get up to the top. You can, uh, you probably mine or jump your way up there. Once you get up there, there's a waystone at the top. And likely one of these little uh, parasail gliders at the, uh, up there as well that you can use to float down with, which is really nice. And that, what do you get from those uh, teleporters up there? They, uh, once you click on them, can be used to teleport around from uh, to different ones in the future. If you break it, it it's gone. It's like a monster spawner now. It, it will just disappear. But otherwise, you can click on those and use those for ta fast teleport between vast distances in the future. So once you get there, then of course you can use your glider or if you have an elytra at that point or something like that. Pretty darn cool. Now let's get into some of the, the clues, the gossip. This describes content that exists in the mod pack you can go out and discover. See if anything in here piques your interest and go for it. Note that this isn't a quest system, nor is it exhaustive. It's simply a way to help lead you to some cool stuff the pack has to offer. Which is, I, I, I totally approve of this. Like, you know, bigger inventory, everybody wants that. Rumor has it there's something you can create that would help you carry more items around. Like a, a backpack, maybe? As it stands, the amount of stuff you can carry on your, you can seem pitiful compared to all the random items and blocks scattered around the place. Find a way you can increase your inventory space, and you can mark this complete by yourself. It doesn't do it for you. It's just a, like a, a to-do list if you want. Then it's got like bird sorting, find the elusive sorting bird. Uh, it's got fantastical mounts, find horned horses, uh, aka unicorns. Um, flying transport, go to the end and locate the floating materials for flying boat transportation. Mm-hmm. Locating fortresses, all sorts of stuff. And prevent mob spawning, renewable sand, return to death points, scalable storage. This one here, return to death point, introduces you to what happens if I die. Rumor has it a mysterious entity has been storing players' items upon death. Supposedly, if you don't die twice, the items stay safe until you return. Apparently, there's also a way to modify an item to point to it. Find a way to locate your previous death point so you can easily gather your items if you die. And what that one's basically saying is if you do die... Um, a little like icon entity hovers over your death point and stores all your items provided you don't die again before you're able to uh, click on that item uh, then you'll be able to get all your stuff back which is just really nifty if you do die again then well whatever was on you in your new death will be stored in a new entity and uh, yeah that old one will be gone so you get one chance to get your stuff back uh, which I kind of like, but at the same time, I don't want my stuff to be lost. I, I think I'd rather the stuff just fly out in the world. I haven't really experimented. Maybe it does get flung out in the world for all I know. But anyway, I'm just going to wait for it to get nighttime, uh, get myself some stone tools like I was saying, and then we can go explore and see what the world actually looks like instead of me just jawing on this entire time. Okay, so I currently have myself set up just a little furnace and a campfire just so I can get some free, free cooked food. I chopped down another tree, got myself a bit more wood, and in the process, there we go, got myself a little bit more food as well. Put that over here, and there we go. In the process, I also found, because I was just mining straight in here to get some stone, but I did find an entrance into an underground area, which... Works good for me because that means iron. And iron to me means a shield. <laughs> because I already see, or I saw, there was a skeleton over there not long ago. Um, I think he despawned, but oh, let's see, I don't have. Uh, mm, I guess I, if I use this, is, this smelts one and a half items. Yes, I've learned my lesson since then. So maybe I can find a second iron to smelt. At the very least, I can get a little bit of some coal as well, because I made some charcoal uh, just a little bit so I can have more of the, uh, the campfires, because I really do like campfires. They're, it's just, they're very immersive, they're very pretty, and 
What am I getting? Is this XP? Weird blue XP going on here? Purple? Teal? Am I getting like multiple colors of XP? Oh, the different XP orbs are different colors. Oh, that one was red or pink. I'm, I'm actually mining further away just so I can see. Yeah, they look different. Okay, so there's a mod in here that's, that's making the XP orbs very colorful, which I, I actually really like that. I'm all I'm a big fan of, of RGB. Um, this is a very dangerous area here, considering I'm seeing a lot of sand. I'm gonna give it a little explore. Oh, I see I see iron, so that's a safe spot. There's that second iron I was looking for, and in fact, I'm gonna take this with me. The passion vines. Very pretty. I like them. Can I do anything with them? So you pick it up, press U, and you can see you can turn it into a bundle. Passion Vine Coil. Spawns in rainforests. Alright, use for this to make Passion Vines. Okay, so it's just a way of compressing it. Can be thrown. When it lands on a block, it drops down a vine you can climb. Oh, okay. So that's kind of neat. Um, if I... Oh, oh boy. And I just released the Kraken. Okay. But at the same time, I now see that there is a bit more iron than I anticipated, uh, which I should have probably dug around a little bit more. And this means that I can have some iron tools as well as uh, a shield, or at least an iron tool, maybe a pick. Let's let's go through here because the water is really pretty and clear. Get down here and grab some of this, more of these vines if I can. See, I don't see it really being too big of an issue. Because with recent swimming mechanics, it's not so bad. I mean, it, it just kind of flows in there. Oh, I see a few more vines down there. So that might be all I need to get the last bit so I can make myself a throwable bundle. That would be pretty cool. Uh, just to experiment going out. I've got enough. I can make it. There we go. Passion Vine Coil, which they also just look really pretty. So maybe I can save some of these other ones, plant them up above and have them grow down, and I can use these for uh, uh, growing later on. So that's six. So if I put in uh, three planks, that should smelt these up. I'm going to use it to make myself, oh, probably a pick, uh, a shield, and I, I don't know if it's worth a shovel. I think I'll just save the last piece, and uh, we'll, we'll keep the uh, sand for now. Then we'll move on around to another area. Okay, so my math skills are, are pretty bad. So just don't don't hate me for it. I, I just had another plank. I, I'm still working this thing out. I'm I'm more a modded player. I'm not used to <laughs> trying to figure out what it is for oh my gosh, I'm gonna put this in there just in case. For the uh, the non modded areas. That should do it. Yeah, it did. Okay, good. Nice. And I can hear the crickets are out already. <laughs> Let me get a little bit of some wood. I'm going to need at least five planks for that shield, if I remember properly. There we go. And then I can do that pick as well. Nice. All right. And I'll keep that as a backup for now. But for the moment, I think I need to do another sleep. And then we can move on. We'll just take this with me. Hello, giant mushroom. And, you know, I would like the... Let's just break this with my hand. The charcoal that drops. I would also like this back. Just because I don't really want to carry around a whole bunch of stone. I mean, I've got four. But either way, it means I don't need to mine that much more. So, I notice that there's this rainforest here, which looks really pretty. It's very vibrant. More of these adzuki sprouts, which I imagine will eventually turn into adzuki beans at some point. Um, wow, these oak leaves are really vibrant. It must be going through like a jungle area. See lots of roses and stuff, and those bananas. Um, I think this is part of Neapolitan. Oh, I just broke something there by accident. Let, let's see if... does it take an axe? Banana bundle. And I just got but four bunches of bananas. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, I'm not hungry at the moment, but I imagine that they're probably edible food. At least that's what it sounds like. So, I've got my passion vine coil. Let's see if I can find a spot where it would really work out to my advantage. I, I don't think that it will work that great here, because like the farthest I've got is like four blocks. 
So maybe I continue moving around this until I find something a little bit flatter. There we go, yeah. Okay, let's try up here. Nice. Oh, did I get it back? No, I got a passion vine back. Okay. So it only goes down so far as well. Interesting. Oh, but it also only went up so high. Cool. Um, well, now I know, and I just fell down a block. Great. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to work my way up this uh, mountaintop here and see what there is to find at the top. Any, uh, any ore easily accessed in here? No, it looks like that just goes right back out. And there's some coal there, which is great. Grab some more of these. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what there is to see. And here we are at the top. Uh, I did a little bit of a scaling coming up here, and man, just some of this stuff from this is just really pretty. Uh, passion vine, more passion vines. Is that some kind of... Really? Do you get fruit from those too? Oh, <gasps> that's awesome. Okay, definitely going to be using some of those around the base. So I've got in mind an idea for a little starter house as well. Uh, I'm thinking like thatch and and like a bunch of the, uh, the dark oak that I just got. Uh, I imagine there will be more. Oh, maybe I'll take some of these banana trees. Because I think that the leaves can be used for paper. Yeah, look at that. One gets you two... Or, okay, so there's small, medium, and large, and you can get paper for each one of those. That's awesome. I'm going to try bringing some of these with, because I have an idea for these for use in a house build. And this will also give me a whole bunch of other materials at the same time. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, a monkey just came through. Let me grab these bananas real quick. Do you want some, do you want some bananas, monkey? Do you want a bunch of bananas? Maybe? You're, you're, are you a spider monkey or something? You're really cute. You're going super fast. I don't think I can click on you. <laughs> Do I need to like... I, you're in, a, you're in a, a block if I break it. There we go. Whoa. I just... I've got slipping. <laughs> okay. That, that did not work out the way I thought it would. <laughs> I forgot that that's what these things do. <laughs> I tried clicking on the monkey to do, to give it the, the banana, but it didn't really work. So I'm going to harvest a bunch of these and uh, continue exploring. And uh, we'll see what else we can find besides spider monkeys. And of course, I just saw a little raccoon. Oh, what's this? Twig nest with chicken eggs. That's pretty interesting. Actually, let me uh, convert all these paper, all these things to paper for now. I hear you. Here, you want you want passion fruit? Enjoy. Leave me alone now. You're gonna eat it. You're welcome. <laughs> I know you want more, but <laughs> it's my chicken eggs. No, give it give it back. Oh, super cute though. <laughs> Gotta say, this is a chunk of a of a raccoon as well. Oh, this looks nice. Those strawberry fields over there as well? Oh. Maybe we uh, we check out the other side of this hill from up here and see if... Uh... Yeah, this looks nice. Oh, those are mountains. That means I could go... I could potentially find a yak, get myself some leads, and start uh, gathering critters. I know that there's more ways of gathering critters, but... Oh, there's pretty flowers down there too. Definitely non-vanilla. But, and I would, you would think, you know, hey, Valen, why aren't you, you know, why don't you make a house up here? Because you know how difficult it is to get up to these locations <laughs> when they're up so high? <laughs> Admittedly, it's really pretty up here, but I think, I think a nice little flat area would be good. I also see a little, are those mushrooms? Or like, like glow shrooms, rather. Are, are those, are those the sunny ones? How do I get down? Because <laughs> this looks like it's going to be a bit dangerous. Uh, there we go. Probably going to end up eat, needing to eat a lot of food here. Now, the cave generation in this is actually different uh, from vanilla. It's got a bit of some really cool generation in it. Um, and it's definitely going to make things really interesting when you end up go. Uh, at least in my mind, a lot more interesting when you go caving. Come on, please. Let, let, me, let me up here. I need to get through. 
I don't want to die. That's too big of a, too big of a drop. Here we go. I can get my way down here. And of course, there's more dark oak. I want to see that those are... Let me get this, the switch out of my hand. I don't want to scare the darn things. Look at them! Moo blooms. That's what they are. And they give me a sunny effect. I, I don't actually remember what that does. But I totally approve. We need to, we need to have a little house nearby here. I think this works. Then maybe we can keep some moo blooms. Um, maybe. There's also a little cave here. This works out really nice, actually. I think I think this is a really nice spot. Uh, as much as I could probably use my... I just realized a hoe to break all these things. I think I should do that. So I might set up a little house here. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, I will likely need a few materials. Do I have... I have two iron. Perfect. I should have been shearing all this grass this whole time because I want to make... Um, grass thatch. I was figuring that I might use some of this for like a roof, but you can see you can take regular grass and wheat, tall grass and wheat, um, giant tall grass and wheat, <laughs> and make different thatches. And then of course you can use those to make stairs and thatch slabs. And I think if I look up, yeah, there's even thatch vertical slabs. How crazy is that? Plus there's algae thatch, there's cattail thatch, duckweed thatch, frond thatch, beach grass th beach grass thatch. Don't don't say that too too quickly. Um, but I will obviously need a farm. Uh, I only have eleven seeds, and it will need to you know involve a bit more than what I currently have set up here. But at the very least, I can get started on some of this and get some of the materials going. I'll probably just make myself like some walls and a bed. To start with, uh, since I don't think that I'm going to have the materials for the thatch straight away. Hello! Oh my gosh, we've got these really cute little hummingbirds that actually... Are you pollinating? You're so cute. Oh my goodness. Gosh, cute animals. They're, they're the thing <laughs> with Minecraft lately. <laughs> So this is just the bottom part. Obviously, I need to do a lot more uh, on this. It, it looks really basic, but I, I ran out of materials. So it should be able to keep me safe, if only because, you know, I've got fencing along this edge here, so I can still look out. But if uh, a skeleton comes up, then, well, I'm, I'm going to have to use a shield, <laughs> at least temporarily. Let me move this bed. Let's put it uh, in the corner for now, so it's at least out of the way a bit. And I can start making myself some storage. And that's right, with Quark recipes installed, a recipe like this does work, which is fan frickin tastic Let me tell you, it's nice to be able to just like mass make chests like that without having to convert everything. So let's do um, a bit of... Actually, I'm going to move that one more time. Put these here and there and that should do and then i will have the re like i was thinking i would have like my crafting table and furnace and all that stuff i could put this here um i've got space for more things like smokers and all that good stuff but i think at the moment i'm going to have the bed just right this side there we go we've got ourselves another campfire because while i was building this i noticed this little beehive out here Really, really happy about this. This is nice. And there's flowers right in front of it. Don't don't get angry with me. I'm just going to put this down here, okay? I just want it to be low enough that I can put a... Uh, oh, it's already dripping with honey, too. That's beautiful. So I can put... Um... Oh, there it goes inside. Nice. Can I... Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I already have honey. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, I'm actually a beekeeper in real life too, so this this is this is a good thing. I hate when the planks go the wrong way. Like you don't want them to go in that direction. But honestly, there's a solution for that, and I think it's not this. It's uh, let, let's look up plank. And yeah, there we go. It's this vertical dark wood planks, and that's oh, it's three of them. Of course, they need to be vertical. There we go. Yes, and then I can have it line up with the door properly. 
So it looks more like a welcome mat, like it's supposed to, instead of like whatever the heck it was. I didn't like that. <laughs> We've got a little bit of a, a little breathing room up there. Cool. So I'm just kind of sorting out a little bit of stuff, and then I figure we can go for a bit of a look around, maybe a little bit of a mining expedition down below and see what we can find. There we go, just a little bit of something to get started with. Uh, I imagine I could probably shear a whole lot of stuff because I kind of need the grass as well. Oh, it would be better if I did the... is this the giant stuff? The giant tall grass. Uh, the reason being is the giant tall grass makes a lot more of the, uh, the stuff I'm looking for for the roof of this house. So there we go. Now I feel much better and I could probably easily just use the uh, the hoe to get myself wait the hoe to get myself a bunch of seeds so I can plant these up for more wheat real quick okay passion fruit um, yeah when you eat it apparently you spit out lots of seeds <laughs> I did not see that coming <laughs> okay so we're going to go down to underground, see if there's some, some stuff of interest besides just coal, which I will mine up, but uh, see what we can find down here. There we go. Three ingots makes a bucket. Perfect. Uh, I've just been doing a little bit of mining. This actually dead-ended down here, but dead-ended right next to some lava, which I can use for some fuel. I'm also smelting up a bunch of, oh, there we go, a bunch of charcoal or a bunch of uh, iron so I can get myself some iron tools. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I find a better cave since this one just kind of ended abruptly. All right, well, I did a little bit more left and right looking through things, just coming up to dead ends. But honestly, there's plenty more to do in this pack and... I don't think that I have enough time for it because I did a lot of waffling on at the very beginning, uh, just describing everything that's in the pack because of, you know, reading the, the pack notes. But hey, you know what? If you want to see more of uh, this pack being played, let me know uh, in the comments. Give a like and uh, don't be afraid to click the notification bell on YouTube so you can see when we've got more videos coming out. But this is a possible video that I might, or a possible mod pack I might do a Let's Play series on, depending upon what you guys would like to see. The, this is just the beginnings of a house behind me. Don't don't judge me by just this little beginning. Probably uh, going to be finished in the thumbnail instead. But anyway, um, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch and help us to spread the mischief. And uh, until next time, folks, I'll see you. Bye.